So I'm Dr. Holder. I'm a pediatric epileptologist. I specialize in treating children and adolescents with seizures. Yeah, so epilepsy is very common. One in 26 Americans has epilepsy. So no matter who you are, where you live, what type of work you do, anyone can be diagnosed with epilepsy tomorrow. So this is something that really everyone should learn about. So a seizure is abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Sometimes we think of it like an electrical storm. I like to think of the brain as being in balance. So we have chemicals in our brain that are excitatory and we have chemicals that are inhibitory. Either of those, too much excitation or too little inhibition can cause a seizure. And what we try to do with our treatments is get the brain back in balance. Yeah, epilepsy is not contagious. You can't catch epilepsy from somebody else. You want to make sure that they stay safe and they don't hurt themselves. So seizures can look like a lot of different things on the outside and it's important that we know what to look for so we can recognize when someone's having a seizure. So let's take a look at both the most common and lesser known seizures. Generalized tonic-clonic seizure is probably the most recognizable of seizure. Usually a patient becomes stiff first and then usually rhythmic jerking involving the entire body. Patients are usually unconscious during this seizure and may need some help. Seizures usually last two to three minutes and usually resolve on their own. So a focal aware seizure is a seizure where it starts in a small area in the brain and the patient remains conscious during the seizure. The person may have twitching of one part of their body, an arm or a hand or their face. They may have funny sensation somewhere in their body that's hard for them to describe. Sometimes patients report a funny sensation in their, in their belly. They feel sick to their stomachs, so they may be slow to respond to questions. They may get confused when they're answering their questions, or they may not be able to communicate with you at all. Generalized Epson seizures are very brief staring seizures. It's almost like someone flips a light switch. One second the child's there answering questions, and then the seizure starts and they're immediately gone. And then as soon as the seizure ends, they're right back where they were, sometimes even finished the sentence that they started before the seizure. Sometimes if you look very closely, you can see subtle signs that they're having seizures. And occasionally the kids will know that they've missed something. I've had kids call them glitches or memory lapses. So sometimes we can get that information from the, the patients if we ask them. What is it like to have a seizure? Before I have a seizure, first I would slowly start to black out. I would begin to get sleepy and my vision would slowly like fade away, I believe. Five seconds before to 30 seconds before, I kind of get this anxiety build up. Um, and you know, when the seizure is coming, uh, I get some, some pulsation in, in my head. I haven't been like really able to like know when they're coming on. I usually just wake up and I'm like, what happened? So it can be overwhelming to hear a diagnosis of epilepsy, but what we want people to know is that really for the most part, you or your loved one can live a very normal life and do all the things they wanted to do even after they've been given the diagnosis of epilepsy. Many patients who are diagnosed with epilepsy need to take some medication to control their seizures. And the good news is that we have so many medications available now that in almost all patients, we can find a medication that's effective, controls seizures, and has no side effects. Other options would include things like diet therapy, a neuromodulation, which includes devices that are implanted to treat seizures, and surgery. It's important for anybody who's having what I kind of would call a funny spell, any kind of abnormal behavior, movement, report to your primary care doctor what happened and tell them you think it might have been a seizure. Then the person needs to be referred to an epileptologist, which are doctors who specialize in the treatment of epilepsy. It's okay if you can only find a neurologist in your community to start there, which is a doctor that specializes in problems of the brain. If you're a child, you should see a child neurologist. And if you're an adult, you should see an adult neurologist. The appropriate medical test for a new onset seizure is an electroencephalogram or an EEG, which is a brainwave test. And this can give us a lot of information about whether someone's having a seizure. Not everybody with epilepsy has an abnormal EEG, but it is the best place to start. With the information from an EEG and with a neurology appointment, we should be able to make a decision if the person's had a seizure or if we need to do any further testing. Anybody who's failed two treatments and is still having seizures should see an epileptologist. In that case, you should really make the trip Go wherever you need to go to see an epilepsy specialist. So the goal in treating seizures are trying to get your seizures under the best control you can, especially while the brain's developing, and have patients to get right back at their life and be doing all the things they were doing before the seizures were diagnosed.
I know it feels uh, the significant weight on you right now, but it will get better. And there are people out there that are, are suffering what you're suffering, so reach out to them. Hear what they have to say. It's a normal thing and like, it's not gonna stop me from like doing things I love and like seeing the people you love. For a really long time, I was ashamed of having epilepsy, but even though it made my life really difficult, it did kind of help me grow and I learned a lot more about everything. If I know someone that was diagnosed with epilepsy, I would tell them to take their medication daily so they won't trigger any seizures. I will strongly recommend them to take care of themselves as well. Take time to pamper, vent, cry, or do something they enjoy because it helps and we need that as parents. I would tell them to stay happy and do creative stuff. Finding people who really understand has been the most helpful for our family. That has helped me and your experience can also help somebody else. And the group of us around the world who've lived with this in our families have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, and we have a lot of love for each other. We're all here to support each other. Make sure you seek out communities like the Epilepsy Foundation Los Angeles for further information and assistance. They are there to help and provide guidance for everything from important questions to ask your doctors to the latest seizure first aid guidelines. There are doctors like me ready to help. Please share this video with your friends, teachers, and family so that they understand what epilepsy is so that they will be prepared should they encounter someone having a seizure. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I have this, this letter this patient wrote me. I, I framed it and hung it. I have to show you. It's just up here with Velcro. I framed it because it was so touching. That's one of my kids who aged out. All right, I'll read it. Dear Dr. Holder, when I came here to this hospital, I thought I was never going to be seizure free. I felt depressed all these years. Now I feel confident because one doctor told me that I would be seizure free one day. And that's you, Dr. Holder. He actually, I saw him for his last clinic visit and he brought us back a giant box of bakery items and this handwritten letter. I know, he never thought he could be seizure free. And I'm sure I didn't tell him, you for sure are gonna be seizure free. I'm for sure I told him, I'm gonna try my best to get you seizure free, but we did.